The following podcast contains strong language, like what the actual fuck. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year. Daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck. Hey, what the actual fuckers, and welcome to WTAF of this country podcast. Now, first, he's the man who accidentally called me earlier, and I heard him slagging me off. But it's okay because I slag him off too. It's Neil, which is quite true because we were doing that before the before we went on air. It's Neil. I don't need to say anything, do I? <laughs> My case has been fought. <laughs> it has. It has. So, but I wouldn't slag you off unless I slag you off to your face. You know that. I know. We've known each other far too long. It's just part of the course, isn't it? Now, part of the course. Yeah, 149 episodes in, I'm sure we've slagged each other off probably at least a <laughs> of the time. Yeah. <laughs> now, our returning superfan guest this episode is one of our favourite actors and host of the chart-topping, award-winning, and one of the best podcasts out there in podcast world, the Two Shot Podcast. And he's a man I need to give a massive apology to. Please welcome to the WTF once again, Craig Parkinson. Hooray! Thank you, guys. Lovely to be here. Uh, what, what, let's just back up on that. Okay. Why do you, why do you need to apologise to me? I need to apologise to you because I killed you. So I need to apologise. Uh, you just need to get into the line. There's a big, long line of <laughs> apologists. I was, and I genuinely... Um, yeah. uh, let me explain. The Bandersnatch, the uh, Black Mirror episode, which was the interactive episode, which... Yeah. Uh, our wonderful friend Craig uh, starred in. I genuinely felt so much remorse when I pressed that button that meant that you died. Spoilers for anybody. Uh, well, there's not a lot of things you can do. I mean, you can go down very different avenues and try not to kill uh, Dad. But at the end of the day, it just depends how you want to kill Dad. <laughs> so, uh, if anything, there's a lovely menu of death. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's all there. I, uh, yeah, inevitably, I blame Charlie Brooker for this. Yeah. Well, I think you should. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we will get into. I want to go. We want to talk to you about this country series three and mm -hmm. and the whole thing and and the two shot podcast and everything. But what kind of experience was that? filming um bandersnatch because it was a different kind of experience i would assume it was uh mental it was complete it was uh controlled chaos uh because normally with a black mirror episode so andrew scott's episode to put it in, into perspective andrew scott's episode started filming in our final week and we ran over by two weeks and they'd already finished their episode by the time we'd really? finished and we'd already <laughs> been filming for i think six weeks goodness me but it's because everybody was doing something that they'd never done before because it was television that had never been played out before but because uh, well, I think because Netflix gave Charlie and Annabelle complete control over what's going to happen and they trust what Charlie and Annabelle do, um, they thought it would be an amazing idea. And I mean, I've never seen it, but, you know, it turns out that, yeah, it was a good idea. Whether and have it, and I haven't spoke to Charlie about it yet. Um, but having read interviews with him, whether he would do it again or not is another matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I know that, um, look, it was a really tight-knit crew, and it was a small cast, and we were all in the same boat because we were going, crikey, no one's, as much as any of us have been, like, filming and been in the industry for so long, we haven't done anything like this. We were constantly going, what, where are we? What year are we in? What scene are we in? What type of scene do we have to do? We've got to recreate 
a certain scene four or five times for everybody's um, uh, different avenues that they're going to go down. So it was a constant, we were in constant bafflement. Mm. But it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun because you just know it ain't going to happen again. You're not mm. going to film this again. Mm. At all. Not like this. Craig, was the um, script, was it, I mean, was it hard to learn the script? <laughs> <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> yeah. When, it, when I got, um, so I got sent the script and I was in Soho and um, ironically, I was recording some podcasts at my friend's cafe, Maison Berto in Soho, where when we're in London, we have a, um, a little office there. And... I got sent an urgent script from Charlie and Annabelle saying that I had to go and meet them in a, in a few hours in Ealing. So I had to cancel one of uh, the podcasts. And they wouldn't send me the script until I'd signed an NDA. So I had to mm. sign the NDA. And then the script came. And I'm not, you can see me, because but this is a podcast. So yeah. let's think of... Okay, okay. It was um, the like size a, phone, of the, a phone book. It, it was the yellow pages. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Go- Google because... it, kids. Google it, kids. Don't know whether they still have the yellow pages. <laughs> I said that the other week about Steve Wright. I went, "It's not a Steve Wright podcast." Google it, kids. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then they sent uh, another version on a, an email, which was so much easier to navigate because you could make your choices so it's a very interactive script Mm. um and i finished reading it in a couple of hours and i had no idea what on earth was going (laughs) (laughs) it was just the most bonkers script ever but i went to meet david slade um the incredible director um and annabelle at ealing and we had a chat and uh, and then it was like, okay, well, we're starting in a couple of weeks, and then away you go. Mm. So in in that, it was, I think it was better, certainly for me as an actor, that I didn't have too much thought process time to worry about it. Mm. Yeah. And then once we were there, and I I'd worked with the hair and makeup team. The, and certainly the, the designer before um and we just all everybody just got all got on it was great mm. you know, will Porter's amazing as some chowdhury um and it was just yeah it was uh it was a total joy if quite a, a mind fuck <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and anybody that hasn't seen it on netflix really should do themselves a favor and do it because it's the most it's probably well, one of the most unique pieces of you say do themselves a favour, but you know, I mean, I, I mean, have we got not enough in this year to, <laughs> to, to, to scramble people's brains? <laughs> but I think it's to... the perfect time to do it now. You might I really right, do. Neil. You might be right. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's very rare to get. I mean, I, I've got loads of stuff that I love rewatching just because it's easier. It's easy to an easy watch, like you know, the Office or whatever, or this country. It's just an easy watch. But that is one of the most challenging rewatches because it literally is something different every time you mm. decide what is going to happen to everybody. Yeah. And that was the thing I found fascinating was the fact that when you then went online and found out that there are actually like, well, hundreds of different ways of watching it. And like, I, I, I think I watched it five or six times. I don't think I, I don't think I watched like obviously every single different time, but yeah. And you've, you've, Still not completed it. No, that's it. And it's like, (laughs) and it's uh, the the, um on social media, like everybody was like, I think what I saw, everybody was trying to act. Oh, I've seen it like twenty seven times now, and some go, I've seen it thirty five, and it was almost like a badge of honor on how many time different times. Just the ending, I think there was, well, look, I don't know how many numbers, but it was just crazy. There's different hidden things in there as well. Oh, I can't begin to tell you. And the when it really blew up, the amount of theories 
that I had via social media were crazy. And I just ended up just not responding to anybody because it's like, I just it's can't just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to fall down in that rabbit hole. And also, I can't even actually remember exactly what we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And also, you know, because we were jumping around um, before... Oh god, I got spoilers because I can't really say. But we're jumping around time zones. So I was in the eighties and I was in the seventies, and then certain. Oh, it's just not, it's it's as bonkers to talk about it as it, as it is to watch it. <laughs> yeah. But you know that's the the genius of uh, you know groundbreaking television such a such as Black Mirror and um, the fact that you know started off on a channel like uh, like channel four it couldn't have started off anywhere else Mm. because i don't think anybody would have dared give it that time and space and then when the budget grew and then netflix became what it is then it gave uh charlie just a huge palette to Mm. sort of do what he needs to do and mm. uh, hopefully he'll uh, he'll carry on pushing the boundaries of of telly yeah mm. yeah you need people like that don't you that's going to give you something a bit more left field than 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 what you normally expect well absolutely but i was talking to somebody this morning about how the comfort and warm hug of an eight a clock show on a Sunday night that is safe and lovely and warm and we want to wrap up on it, it that'll always be there and that's yeah. great but for somebody to challenge an audience and make sure an audience isn't patronized uh, and make them sit up and take notice then they're the writers and showrunners and directors and producers and people that are sort of, you know, smashing down the walls of, of groundbreaking television that we need mm. you know, to, to, to keep things going. But it. Netflix seems to be that outlet for directors and producers and makers of things to give them that freedom. Do you see that something they will continue to do? Yeah, I think so. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's just Netflix. I mean, I know... The, you know, the old look, I've done over the past couple of years, I've done three big things for Netflix. And I know that certainly from what I know, they've left the showrunners alone and not interfered, mm. which I should imagine is a, a writer and showrunner's dream. But I also know that certain people I've worked for on BBC two and BBC one on channel four, when they're established as they are, they let them do what they need to do. Mm. Mm. So I think it's about freedom and to be less controlling, but to, 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 to say as, uh, you know, we trust you, we trust what you're going to do and you're going to bring it instead of interfering mm. too soon and upsetting the apple cart, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Now, when we, we spoke to you the first time, was, I think, around about sort of like 100 episodes ago, which is crazy. Oh, is. oh my God, that is crazy. <laughs> which is crazy. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was like, I think when we were halfway through season two of, or series two of this country. Um, so since we've last spoken there was the, the special and obviously yeah. and obviously series three when yeah. it came when it came to the end of series two and we had the hang the the, the cliffhanger mm. um were you satisfied with what happened in regards to like martin mucklow and kerry and going to jail and with what happened in the aftermath yeah i, I don't think i've ever not been satisfied with this country right and i had time i moved house um a few weeks ago which is why we've had to delay us talking. Yeah. And the other night, over the space of two nights, I sat and rewatched season three and I hadn't watched it since it aired. And so many different things popped up. 
and I found some stuff in much more moving than what I th- I thought the first time around. Right. Mm. Um, but yeah, completely satisfied. And I would be, because I know this question comes up a lot with your podcast about things moving on and moving forward or revisiting. I would be very happy if it was left where it is. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's interesting. Even like 10 years time, just to pop back to the village to see what they're doing or. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, look, there's loads of things that I would love for both of those two. And I, in my sort of little dreamy head, I don't envision them being in the village. One of them possibly will be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think it'll be Curtin. I, I think, you know, I think Daisy will probably stay there. Right. Yeah. But no, I think where it left is such, it's just kind of perfection. Really. It is that thing. It's like, it, it is a perfect little thing that if you just carry on, it just is going to, it's going to be imperfect and it's going to just not work. I, I, I'm, I'm sort of starting to come around to that same thing that you just leave it, put it away. That is that one thing and then let them carry on and work on other things. It was, it was a moment, a perf, and I can't think of an episode that was a dud. Mm. Mm. Because I was talking to John Thompson on my podcast a few weeks ago because they had the 25th anniversary of the Fast Show, right? And I was talking to him about the very nature of sketch shows. And the great thing about sketch shows is there's always a dud. But it doesn't matter because in 30 seconds or a minute, there's going to be another sketch along, which is why they can move it so fast and it's Mm. great and you can just sit there. Whereas with the Fast Show, it was pretty much hit after hit after hit. Yeah, yeah. And even if you knew what was coming, you crave that as an audience member because you wanted you they wanted you wanted that catchphrase. That's what you wanted. Mm. Um, but with something like this country, there isn't really any catchphrases. No. But there's just investment as an audience. See in my characters. T-shirt. <laughs> what is it? What does it say? Yeah, apart from that. <laughs> no, apart, from, apart from the shit that you two do. Exactly. Um, but, exactly. Um, I would be very upset if uh, Paul Chahi wasn't recognised for his work in season three. Mm. Yeah. Because going back to rewatch it, um, you know, on the drive-in um, lesson episode. Yeah, yeah. And he starts to talk about his past, mm. and the camera is firmly because it, you know, for all intents and purposes, it's it's a documentary. Um, the camera's next to Daisy in the back, and it doesn't really move, but we see. Daisy and Charlie's, they're listening to him tell this story about what happened and it gets deeper and deeper and darker and darker and they're trying to make light of it, but he's regressing and it just absolutely broke my heart. Mm. I mean, I remember it breaking me the first time, but on the rewatch, it just oh, it absolutely uh, floored me. It absolutely yeah. floored me. Yeah, I must admit, because when when we spoke to to Paul about that, it was the fact that he, like you say, he's pouring out his heart. And it almost looks like that Daisy and Charlie, that Kerry and Curtin are really being taken in by what he's saying. Mm. And then Kerry said, but he didn't hit you though, did he? I was like, well, it doesn't matter. It didn't really hurt you. Yeah, but that's the that's the tragic of it. That's the drama. I mean, it's just, in, it's, it's incredible that you have mm. that balance of characters. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's like a 
it's Pinterest without sounding wanky. Yeah. Like a... <laughs> no, but you're right though, Craig. It's, it's like we've spoken uh, about the dark bit, you know, with with um, Martin when he's talking about hovering over Kerry as a baby with a pillow, and it takes you to that really dark place. Yet you're sort of laughing with it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. I do. But got, just picking up on that, Neil. There was um, when Martin's having his party mm. back at the house um we kind of i think do we see it through the kitchen window yeah that's yeah. right yeah yeah and then we see carrie come out and she's got her her backpack on mm. but we see all these awful human beings in yeah. the kitchen <laughs> jumping up and, and then they're listening to i think is it boys are back in town I think it is something I like that. I think it is something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Something just so crass. Um, and it's it's incredible when, um, Car- you know, when Carrie lets her guard down, even when the cameras are there. But I really mm. felt for her at that point. It's another yeah, moment. She, really... she, she looked scared, didn't she? She wanted to get out. She was scared of the party. Her really, bravado. Really had gone. scared. Yeah, mm. really scared. And it must have taken her a lot to get out of the house because mm. of all these obnoxious, boisterous, alpha male pricks. Mm. Uh, I mean, were they drinking Skittles vodka at that point? I can't know. Probably. <laughs> 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 Really fucking awful, but it really brought it. that and um, Paul regressing about his his uh, his youth and, mm. his, and his father. Yeah, really. Yeah, shook me this time. Yeah, it was gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. He, he felt again. There was the story with the skinheads and everything jumping up and down on his Morris Minor, and you had all of that and that. Oh yeah, um, it is absolutely heartbreaking to listen to isn't it yeah it really it is. is it is um but that's why um paul should be uh winning his bafta next yeah. year and yeah. i hate to do, say something like that because i don't want to jinx anything but if there's any justice in the acting business, which there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to poo-poo it. But, um, yeah, I thought it was um, such a well-observed and well-judged performance throughout the whole series. Um, and this really was the Vickers series, without yeah. a doubt. And, and deservedly so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we 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 said again, said the same thing too, and we said that the BAFTA should be in the post next year. I think it's, I think if you look at it right from series one, he's always been the heart of like running through every series. Yeah, but, of course. But this was the series when you really find out the, the crux of the man, if you like, what what makes him who he is. Well, we delve deeper, you know. We mm. we saw a son. We saw what he needed. We saw the veneer go down because you can't be this happy and positive all the time. No. (laughs) And we saw anger. I mean, it was just... It was uh, as expertly expertly delivered as it was expertly written, Mm. in Mm. my opinion. Yeah. The naivety as well of talking to the, the, the vicar from just outside of Bristol that only thinks that talking about needles are talking about, <laughs> talking about oh, God, needlework yeah. and the needlework club and stuff. <laughs> it just goes to show you that, God, not all vicars are like you. No, no. Mm. This geezer is awful. I, I, genu- awful. I genuinely felt like, oh, my God, like Bristol's going to like eat him up and spit him out. He's going to be, what, what's going to be... I th- I'm sure he'll be all right. He'll be all right. He'll be fine. You know what? I think it'll be the making of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be the making, it'll be the making of that Bristol Paris. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> he can look after himself. The way that he tackled Curtin when Curtin crawled up in, you know, behind him and that and uh, on, the, on the railway bridge, <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll, he'll have no problems whatsoever. He'll become um, a changed man. He'll become his own spin-off series. It'll be like the Equaliser, but a vicar. Yeah. <laughs> 
God. <laughs> Where he that changes was, so much. I, I tell you what, if that was on a pay-per-view channel, I'm going in. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> Get Netflix on it. Netflix. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to talk to you about uh, your podcast because I've been um, I've been devouring episodes over the last sort of week or so. Um, first question I need to ask is how is the uh, the Bullseye remake with Carl Pilkington going? The Bullseye remake with Carl is uh, it's on hold at the is moment. Is it? Oh, I uh, suppose so. Even, yeah. e- even though we um, recorded that um, post. Uh, Sorry, pre-lockdown, and um, we worked out that we don't like an audience. No, that's right. This is this is perfect. <laughs> perfect, <time. laughs> perfect game show. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm gonna. I I've got a call coming back on the podcast soon um, to have a catch up. Um, but we'll. Uh, it's something we we we. You know, I mean, we were joking, but hey, it could become a reality. I mean, <laughs> honestly, when he, said, when he said that you could be Tony, the Tony Green of it all, I thought, this has to be made. This just has to be made. I know, but let's fair, if anything, he's going to be the Tony Green. <laughs> I mean, Carl do not really want to converse with people. He doesn't like people no. that much. No. I, I genuinely like people. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it'd be better just going... Speed belt. <laughs> 65. Black. Red. One word answers with Carl is always easier. And he'd be happy with that. Yeah. He'd be much happier. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah. It, let's just say it's a work in progress. And I know that it's um, something that Ricky Gervais always said in his podcast that Carl has a perfectly round head. He could be the dartboard. It, when it spins round, it could be Carl's head. It'd be uh, perfect. I refuse to uh, to go with that. That's uh, that's, that's a Ricky thing. I I've much more love for, for Carl's head than uh, than Ricky Gervais does. Yeah. <laughs> we will still go with the the spinning dartboard. I out think the black, it in the red has to be made. Same for two in the bed. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Has to be done. Um, and the other one that I thought was epic was your two parter with Lenny James. Oh, thanks. It so was much. it was a uh, I, I listened to it at work yesterday the whole thing and i must admit it's i'm not blowing smoke up your ass it's probably one of the best podcast episodes i think i've ever listened to ever oh thanks man thank it you was so really much. really good so i mean and he's just a, a fascinating for somebody you know you watch him on on screen you don't realize quite how much of a journey he's gone through all his life no and also lenny is uh he's a very honest man but he's also not one that courts um the industry that much mm. and he doesn't give loads of interviews certainly not as in depth as what he did with me and i'm you know i'm forever grateful for it because we had to try to take a little break and he was one of the first ones i had back and I didn't know, as I never know how long it's going to be. It just, it is what it is. Mm. And it turns out that it was, I don't know, it's about two hours, 40 minutes or yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Yeah, it was, yeah. Which is why I wanted to split it into two parts to make it palatable uh, for, mm. the, for the listeners. Um, oh, it could have gone on longer. Uh, believe me. It, 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 look, it could have done, but we both needed a wee. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the true thing. We were both went, God, you need a wee? Yeah, I need a wee. Should we just end it here? Uh, but I've got a lot of love for Lenny. And, um, you know, I worked with him when I was, you know, younger. And I learned from him. And look, I always looked up, looked up to him as, a, as an actor. Um, but as a person, like, yeah, he's, uh, he's just incredible. Mm-hmm. So the, just to reiterate, this is a two-shot podcast that Craig does. If anybody hasn't started listening to it, highly recommend. Start from the beginning and go through. The interviews and the people that he talks to are just so fascinating. You you bring out the best in them, in the conversation sense, Craig. Do you, do you go in with any sort of pre-planned things that you want to address or um, style? Yeah, there's a few things that I want to touch on, mm. but... The main thing, because I never, 
I trained as an actor, Neil. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, yeah. I'm not an interviewer. I just kind of fell into it. But over the three years, I have feel that I've made like loads of mistakes as an interviewer and I've learned, which is kind of what I've done as an actor. And over the years, and we, as I say to like lots of younger actors, whoever, you know, I speak to, you know, fail now, fail now and fail hard while you're young because then you can pick yourself up and you can learn from it. And it's true. Mm. And it just so happens that I'm failing much later than I was in my twenties <laughs> <laughs> as an interviewer. Um, but it's, it's something I adore. I absolutely adore it. And mm. meeting new people every week and having these conversations and interviews but no i mean the only thing that i've ever put down on paper so to speak is that if i have actors on i don't want to discuss too much about jobs i don't want to talk Mm. about work because the whole um format of the podcast was one-on-one interviews and it was the spotlight on the other person, whether they're an actor, a musician, director, writer, artist, potter, uh, sculptor, whatever it is, whatever they did, it wasn't necessarily about their work. It was about them and mm. what drew them to their work. So inevitably, uh, things throughout their creative line are going to pop up, but I don't want to focus on that too much, certainly with actors. Mm. because at the end of a job, the job never ends for an actor until you're doing This Morning or you're on uh, BBC Breakfast or you're talking to The Guardian or you're talking to certain public... Because the press thing is... Uh, it's it's a lot of pressure and it's it's like a little pressure cooker, to be honest, because you have like three days, five days or a week, and you have to do all these publications and all these interviews, and you're doing three to five a day, and it's nonstop, and you're getting asked the same questions Mm. all Mm. the time. So therefore, you're churning out the same answers. So what I never wanted to do was ask any questions that I would be asked. So I would just stay clear of that. And I wanted to Mm. know about, I wanted to make the podcast accessible for everybody you know, it was nothing to do with like the acting industry. It's just about things, stories and people growing up and failures and lessons. And yeah, I don't know. I just want, I just want to try and bring back the art of conversation. Mm. Mm. But that's what I think makes it so accessible for anybody to listen to. It's so human. When I, when I listen to them, I, I'm all the way back and I'm working through every episode and listening to them. And it's, it's just a human conversation and you're seeing them as a human rather than a star or an actor, like you say. And that's why I highly recommend that people listen really do. Mm. Oh, thanks guys. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. So, Cause it's interesting what you say, the, the traditional press, do you think that they're getting less relevant now for um, promoting things when, podcasts are so big these days um or do you think they'll always need that you'll always need to speak uh, to the guardian or places well i think it may always happen certainly i mean i don't know i mean the print publication certainly this year uh is on its arse Mm. Uh, you know Mm. as has been um the television and film industry for the past six months but everything's slowly starting you know the gears are slowly starting to get around again but um i was talking to i was actually talking to a publicist this morning and i was saying that look the reason why i don't want to sell this person's film or this television program is I think th- the audience aren't stupid mm. and they want to invest in a person rather than a show. So if they hear 
about somebody's upbringing or somebody's school life or something that's annoyed them or they can hear an actual real conversation. Yes, it's an interview, but the way I style it is it's a conversation. Um, and I go, oh, by the way, their show's on uh, Channel 4, 10 o'clock on uh, Friday. I'd give it a watch if I were you. If they listen to that, they're going to go and watch it. Yeah. Instead of the big, hard sell and the ramming down the throat um, and taking things apart and going, you know, the same questions of how did you get the part? I auditioned for it. Why <laughs> did you want the part? It's dead good. <laughs> you know, all that bullshit. <laughs> People, yeah. Actors don't want to be asked that. It's like, no. it's... And, be, and also, they don't want to be asked it people don't want to hear it because they've heard it all before. Mm. And, you know, inevitably things need to change. Mm. Okay, right. Um, let me just uh, get rid of all those um, <laughs> questions. <laughs> Very good timing. Very good. A little, little bit of improv for you there. <laughs> oh, he's been training, Craig. He's been training. <laughs> well, you're training very well, Neil. Well done. Oh, dear, dear. Um, no, I... I I, I was I should have listened to the episode that we did together because I can't remember how many you got for Kerry and Curtin when you was in the. Can you remember? Better than Jeremy Vine. <laughs> everyone, <laughs> everyone was better than Jeremy Vine. So I'm going to give you five more then, uh, Craig. I I actually think. It, I think I got four out of five. Right. Okay. But, but I will say it was a possible three, but definitely between three and four. Okay, let's see if you can get the full five then. Are you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I've got to do what's right for me at the end of the day instead of worrying about other people. Was that Kerry or was that Curtin? Oh, can you just repeat it again for me? Yeah, I've got to do what's right for me at the end of the day instead of worrying about other people. Curtin. That was Curtin, GNVQ, when he's talking about going to Swindon. Good start. Good start. Number yeah. two, I can't wait to take Nugget down the keepers for his first pint of freedom. Gary. That was Curtin. Oh! That was Kurt, and I don't think I've ever seen Kerry drink. Have, have we ever seen Kerry drink? Damn you, Jeremy Vine. <laughs> that was Owen Space. Well, you've beaten Jeremy Vine. You got the one, so that's good. Uh, number, th number three. Yes, it's really sad, but everything happens for a reason. Oh, see, this could go either way. It could. That could. Well, it obviously could. <laughs> 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 but, it, it, but I could. But I could hear that coming out of both of them. Yes, it's really Please. sad, but everything happens for a reason. I'm going to go Kerry. It was Kerry. Yeah. That's Curtin's half brother. I can't remember oh. what context it was. I can't oh, oh, don't, I don't, I can't watch that again. That was too sad, that episode. <laughs> what, oh, it was, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, number four. Sorry, it's actually making me feel car sick, you singing like that. I'm going to go Kerry with that. That was Kerry. That's the yeah. aftermath when uh, the vicar was singing David Gray. Oh, uh, well, it, it, well, it would do that to everybody, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, no one wants White Ladder on the stereo no, anymore, no. do they? That's <laughs> that's white Ladder, well done. <laughs> uh, that's three out of four. So we're going for the four out of five again. Here we go. Number five. It's worse for the vicar as well because he's got massive nuts. Curtain. Well done, sir. Four <laughs> Very respectable again. Very respectable. Very respectable. good. Very good indeed. I'm, I, I, I mean, what can I say? Just that one. But congratulations. I'd say congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say awesome. It's a long time since we've had four out of five. Well, it, has, it has been a while. It has been a while. So in regards to your podcast, have you got any guests that you really, really want to talk to? Have you got like no, a bucket list? No, it's funny. People ask me that a lot. And no, I don't, because I'm so surprised when I get approached a lot by companies and publications and television companies. And I always say, look, this is how I do things. And I don't know if necessarily 
this is the right format for your guest. But I'll tell you what I do and what I need, and it's up mm. to you. Right. And some of them go, yeah, no, they don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to talk about their show or their film. And I go, well, that's fine. I know at least three of the podcasts that do that, and you should go there, and that's fine. Because I don't want to waste anybody's time, and I, I don't want to waste my time. No, really. no. Um, because I need to make... And also, the, I want my, my audience understand how it goes, and they know... Be, it would be really weird if I just went, oh, look, we're just going to publicize this show. <laughs> It'd be very odd. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, I'm constantly surprised with, like, I recorded one. Th when's this going out? This will be going out in a couple of weeks' time. Oh, right, okay. So I recorded one last week <laughs> with uh, um, uh, a brilliant English actress who... Yeah, just in case I can't say. But uh, okay. yeah, it's incredible. And then I got a phone call from Channel 4 saying, you can't put that out tomorrow because everything's embargoed till Tuesday. Even though we spoke about the show that she was in for 10 minutes. Oh, right. And it was, it was all to do with her process in the show and it wasn't selling the show. But still, I had to abide by those rules. Um, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, I can't say, but I've got some feet. I've got... <laughs> we shall I've, look forward to it. I've booked... Um, <laughs> I've just booked probably the biggest name I've ever had for October. Really? Yeah. We shall... <laughs> no, we'll wait with anticipation. Just teasing. Um, but, I'm really, I'm, but I'm really excited because I... Basically, a couple of years ago, Julianne Moore uh, was going to come on. And um, her team asked for, she, they said, you've got 20 minutes. And I said, there's nothing I can do in 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, unless she can give me a certain, they, they can't. I said, well, I, I, I'm not the right podcast for you. And I love Julianne Moore and she's incredible. Mm. But when this other um, person <laughs> <Hollywood> would start <laughs> approached and i laid out the rules as i always do um and it's as much for me and them and our our audience you know um and they went yeah no she can do that and sh she'll be great and i went okay we're on okay i'll see you in october so yeah it, it's constantly surprising me so um yeah i'm just uh i'm always overwhelmed so have you found it easier to book guests because of the lockdown, because we, well, we de I definitely found it easier because especially with actors, like when I've asked them before, oh, I'm busy, I can't do that, I can't do this. During lockdown, they sort of, you sort of know that they're not busy and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, we, we were able to speak to a lot more actors. Is, yeah. is, that, is that easier because of Zoom now, which is something that six months ago nobody knew existed? Well, kind of. I mean, you've had some. I've been listening. You've had incredible guests. Your yeah, episodes have been, been immense, crazy. Really, I mean, congratulations, guys. I mean, it's Thank gone from you. strength, yeah. strength to strength. Much. You know, it's That's great. Very kind of you. Um, but I'll be honest. I, I for a lot of it, I was homeschooling. As oh like, right, and I had um, about twelve or thirteen weeks as a single parent. So I'd like, I had no time to do anything. So I had to just stop recording full stop. So I'm sure there's loads of people I could have got. Right. Um, but I was too busy looking after my little boy. Um, but now, even now, and with new tighter lockdown restrictions, yeah, it is easier. But I still don't like it. No. As I'm sure, as I'm sure you don't. I mean, the last time that we were all together, we were in your little hut, and we were all together, and we could see each other. Yeah. And there's something that we need as humans. We need that interaction, even if it's just there, just at the side of us. We just need it. And I think it's the thing is like we've always said that we're very huggy people, and anybody that comes in the shed is like, "How you doing? Nice hug." And it's so weird that you can't do a simple thing like give someone that you that you love a hug. It's yeah, just... those, da those days are gone. 
yeah. Those have gone. There's, there's no Hogan anymore. No, it's no. crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like being uh, married for 25 years. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's no hugging anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all in the elbow. <laughs> it's all, oh, believe me, it's all in the elbow, Craig. It's all in the elbow. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely been married too long. <laughs> definitely. Oh, dear. I'll tell you somebody I would love to see you interview, Craig, in your, uh, in your style, Kerry and Curtin. I'd love you to find out more about them in your style and talk to them and get them to open up. Well, we could do that. As you know, I've, uh, I've had Charlie yep. on as Charlie. Mm. Um, and we've been trying to organize something with Daisy for a while, but she's been too busy having babies. I mean, it's mm. so, so rude that she should do bring human life into this world. Because <laughs> I've been asking her for two years, and, you know, go and pop out a couple of kids. Um, but, um, no, I mean, that would be really interesting. It's funny because um, there's a... Do you know a, a comedy character called Charity Shop Sue? Oh. You, well, should go, you should Google Charity Shop Sue. Okay. He is an alter ego of a comedian in Nottingham, and she's the manageress of a, a charity shop in, in, in Nottingham, hence <laughs> Charity Shop Sue. And she does a YouTube channel. Madonna is like a massive fan. She's got a real cult following, and it's just gone. It's blown up. Uh, but I'm hopeful to interview her as her character. Um, uh, well, when we can get together, mm. right? And that'll be really interesting to interview somebody in character because it will be, it'll be as much on them as it is on me about mm. where we go. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's it's certainly a different uh, format of interview, especially yeah, in long, especially interviewing a character in a long form interview for like an hour. Mm. That'll uh, that'll test us all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, going back to this country, Craig. Obviously, they've announced um, the American pilot will be with us when, well, when it can be, in the current situation. What's your thoughts on an American remake? Absolutely not asked. No, no, it can get in the sea. It, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it. it I, I doubt very much if it's going to be any good at all. And that's probably the cynical side of me, because there's certain projects that I've been involved with over the years that have tried to make it over the pond and it's just ruined. Um, and it is what it is. Mm. This, this country is, is this country. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've, I've heard rumors about who's in it and I know who's behind it and they've got a great pedigree. It what look, it won't be what it is. No. Um, I mean, fair play, but it's not... I, I, no. so the Although one I casting that I'm really struggling to get my head around is Sean William Scott as the vicar. He's, um, what's his name? What? Stifler from American Pie. Yeah. That's the one I'm really struggling with. But that just goes to show you that it isn't going to be the same show. Mm. No, I think it's going to be... Is that a joke? Are you being serious? No, no deadly he's serious. Been, he's been cast, yeah. I think it's going cent to be centralised around the vicar as opposed to around Kerry and Curtin. Well, it's... No, it can't be. It can't be because that completely takes... Are you saying that because what he is the starrier name of who's been cast? Yeah, I just get the feeling that... No, I don't think that'll happen because... No? Well, with... Zero disrespect to Sean William Scott. Has he been sort of um, doing? No, I would. No, he's not. He's not what I'd say is a. a, a he's not. He's a nineties star. His star is not in the ascendancy, is it? As no. no. Um, and surely that would take away the whole ethos of the show, even to take it over to America, wouldn't it? If it was about the vicar rather than the two characters. Well, yeah, because obviously you've got to think about the change of religion and mm. setting uh, who who have they cast as Carrie and Curtin do we know it's two um, pretty much unknowns yeah. well in that well 
I, well, I didn't know that. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Well, that could work because, yeah. you know, for all intents and purposes, uh, Daisy and Charlie were unknowns. Mm. So we, we invested in that world and in, we invested in them. Yeah. Even at that bus stop talking about Lawrence Oil and Bowen for the first time. We, exactly. We were, we, we were in, weren't mm. we? Yeah, absolutely. We were just like, I've seen those kids about. Mm. I've seen them. I know who they are. Look, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too brash. But no, I don't know. Look, I, it's, if, it's... if they get it right, they get it right. I just, I worry about American remakes. Um, office aside, which has been a huge runaway hit. Mm. Uh, I know they were, they were talking about doing a Misfits. Uh, American series. They've been talking about doing a Misfits one for oh god, at least four or five years. Really? And they may they may have done a pilot. It may have crashed and burned, or it may have just fallen at the wayside. I don't know. Mm. And the other one is it, which obviously you were in as well. It's Line of Duty. They're talking about doing an American one of that, yeah, aren't they? They've been talking about doing a Line of Duty one since series two, I think. Right. But I think while Line of Duty is still going, uh, I think they'll leave it and then they'll wait for it to die down and then they'll build it back up over there. Mm. I think that is probably not that I know, but no. And that reminds me as well, uh, as I did with um, Jeremy Vine and my mum, uh, we're going to do a multicoloured swap shop moment now. But Craig, could you just uh, say hello to my wife, Anita, because she's a massive fan uh, of you, especially in Line of Duty. Anita, how are you? I hope you're well. And I just want to send you my condolences. And I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let me know. And I'll uh, I'll come around and uh, give him a big kiss and a cuddle for you. <laughs> You're out and about, and somebody comes up and asks for a selfie. I mean, sort of back in the old days, are, are you comfortable with that? You do you like that, or is it, does it depend on what sort of situation you're in? Um, uh, do I like it? Um, it's not something I caught. Uh, do I mind it? Not at all. Do you get used yes. to it though? Uh, yeah. But... <laughs> Oh, it depends the situation. To be honest, mm. it depends the situation. Um, if I'm sat like having a meal, <laughs> and it's like someone just comes up, it, but no, people are very lovely and uh, respectful, and I, you know, I try and be the same. To be honest, um, and obviously with the podcast, has anybody? recognized your voice rather than your face <laughs> yeah, yes. have they done that have they? <laughs> yeah i was um i went my friends run um uh, a beer stall on levens market in manchester and i went to go and see them on saturday and i rode my bike up to levens and there's only two of them there and i was just gonna go and see them for a bit and say hello and they got so busy that I ended up sort of pulling pints for them. So I was pulling pints and taking selfies at the same time. And then <laughs> someone came up and went, I just want to say, I love the podcast. It's amazing. And I went, really? I went, give, give him a pound off his beer. He loves the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have to say, there's nothing better than having your headphones in, the in-ear headphones. And then when you start each podcast, you're like talking to the listener, aren't you? It's nothing to do with the interview. You're just talking. Yeah. Yeah. And having a bit of a conversation. And it is, it's literally like honey being poured over a mahogany table. That voice. It's bassy and like it's right in your ears. It's it's lovely. That's all I got. It's to not say. a phone sex line, <laughs> Pav. It's not a phone sex it, line. It should be, Neil, because I tell I, you, it is lovely. I will take I will take that compliment. <laughs> oh, God. You want to start charging him? <laughs> I'm not one of those video chat people who charges people for like nice comments. Although Mate, saying that, that is... maybe we should start a, a, a new business about people just saying nice things about your podcast. Wouldn't that be good? Start charging people. That'd I be think nice. that, Sounds that, good. Would, that would be great. That'd be good. I'm just saying, like, I, I'll stand there at work. And I and like your words are just like pouring into my ears, and it's a wonderful thing. 
bless you both. But how's how's work been for you both? Are you uh, both okay? Yeah, I've yeah. I've worked all the way. Uh, no, I didn't know Neil's worked all the way through it. I was off for like fifteen weeks or whatever it was on furlough. Yeah. So Neil's Neil's been on the front line. He's been one of the backbones of Britain. There, yeah, good I've man. Been all the way through. Yeah, it's been. It was. Yeah, it made it a lot easier in some respects the job, but also a lot harder. And I've seen the best and worst of people in the last few months, and that's been a weird time, especially yeah. now. I've spoken about it before. Um, yeah, I've seen people's attitudes change and changing again recently. You know, the selfishness is coming back. And if anybody's listening to this and thinking about it, stop being selfish. Mm. There's enough for everybody. Just stop. Exactly. And mm. just let's just stop and just listen and stand back and just be yeah. a bit kinder. You know, especially when in the, the, the weeks and months ahead. I mean, God knows what's going to happen. I know. We really don't. Talking about that, Craig, is, are you looking, have you got work coming up? And Yeah, yes. Mm. Um, I think it's, but look, yeah, well, look, yeah, I have, I can't talk about it. No. no whether no, no, it's, no. whether it's gonna be fulfilled or not, I don't know. Mm. Uh, but with the best intentions, yes, I have. Um, and that's going to start in October. And I'm extremely grateful to be uh, to be back filming because I miss I miss working with people. I miss yeah. I miss uh, I miss acting. I miss being on set. Um, so look, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But you know, it's. It's all baby steps. I mean, mm. it's uh, it's a new time for everybody, but uh, yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, I'm I'm kind of quite nervous, but excited at the same time. Mm. But yeah, we shall we shall see. We shall we'll see. be there. We'll be there supporting it all the way. Indeed, so. we really will. Thank you, guys. Craig, thank you so much for spending some more time with us, mate. It's been a real pleasure. Um, just stay safe. Keep thank doing you. what you're doing. I will do. I'm um, sorry. For, I'm sorry for talking so much. Me, you know, that's, that's the whole yeah. point. <laughs> that's we that's, love it. that's the, you know when you get a, a podcaster on, that's it. it I was going to say, what would what would you say if your guest said on your podcast, "Sorry for talking too much." Well, you say that's well, exactly what we it, want. Exactly the same thing as you, and it's only because I'm a host, and usually I leave it up to other people to talk. <laughs> no, that means you've just opened the floodgates, and I can talk. Yeah. Mate, honestly, we yeah, could talk for ages. We just want to make sure that you stay safe um and just keep bringing the positive to the world because fucking hell we need it as <laughs> more than ever exactly uh, well you two guys and thanks so much for asking me back on i really appreciate it no it's, it's been a joy it's been and our for pleasure. god's sake everybody subscribe not only to our podcast but to craig's Indeed. you are missing I, out if you haven't listened i will put a link in the show notes so that people can just click the link and go straight to the podcast because believe me uh, if you do one thing subscribe to our podcast but if you do another thing <laughs> subscribe to craig's podcast as well i'm on fire, I'm on fire. <laughs> it really is your ears will thank you that's all they, i can say they, they really will. will they will oh craig, bless you guys thank you so much mate indeed um neil do you want to just do your little bits and pieces before absolutely. we absolutely uh, you can find goodbye. us on all the social media sites everyone i think we're on everyone now i yep. forget how many there are everyone There's, this country pod we are under you can email us if you've got any questions you'd like to ask or any anything you want to know please do email us at wtaf this country at hotmail.com and likewise we've got a website that has all our information and everything you need to know plus tickets to our live show next year fingers crossed fingers crossed at wtafpodcast.com that's right. And come and subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a rating and review. We're now on Amazon Music. Oh, Amazon Music as well. <laughs> All mod cons. Um, and also come and, uh, come and join our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash WTAF for loads of wonderful rewards. Uh, it helps support the podcast and keeps us going. Um, Craig, once again, thank you so much, mate. Thank you, sir. Bless you guys. You take care, all right? And you take care. And thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much, Pav. And go and get plumbed, you fuckers. Scarecrow Festival is like the most important day of the year.
daft cow. This is just ridiculous. What the actual fuck?